Hi, everyone from Sacroche Vineyard in Rutherford, California. I'm Catherine Hall. So are you ready for a 30 minute break from all the difficult anxiety producing really serious, serious events that are going on in the world? I am, and I am thrilled that you joined us here this afternoon. So welcome. This is very exciting for us. It's the first in our series of Hall Sip Ups, Sip as in Shelter in Place and Sip. And so because this is our first event, we have brought out the big gun, and that is Mike Reynolds. Hello, Mike. How's Hi, it going? Hi, Kathy. How are you? I'm great. So it's probably pretty quiet. Looks like you're down at the winery. I am. I'm in the, the lobby of the San Elena Winery. And unfortunately, uh, we are closed uh, and, <laughs> and it's very quiet. My voice actually echoes in the room. But if you've been here, you probably recognize the big uh, piece of art behind me by Nick Cave, which is beautiful. And it's a, there's a great story about Craig and Kathy and this piece of art. Yeah, we actually bought that for each other as a uh, anniversary present. And at the time, we didn't have a wall big enough to put it. So literally, that wall is there so that we have a place that we can hang that art. And we love it. It's yeah, been really it's cool. great. It's yeah. super. It really is. So uh, now it's quiet where you are there. But I imagine back at the, in the production area, there's things going on. No? Yeah, one of the things that's happening here at the winery is um, we are allowed to keep the winemaking process uh, going, as well as uh, the operations in the vineyards. You know, the, the grapes don't stop growing because we're all sheltering in place. And so, you know, we've been preparing for a bottling in June. Uh, we've been doing some blending. Um, we've been starting the farming process, as you can see behind Kathy. You can see the vines just haven't started growing yet, but they're about to, to really push out. And um, so our winemaking and production teams are working on getting the 2018s ready to bottle and the 2019s um, getting blended. Yeah, actually you've been down there doing some blending, haven't you? Last the last three days, it's been really fun. Um, 2019 uh, Pinot Noir and Zinfandel, uh, the last few days for our Walt and Baca brands and um, the wines are great. We're really excited about them. There's great fruit, great energy and um, it's not a bad day when you uh, get to come and have um, Pinot Noir for breakfast. So Yeah, of course. Every day is better with Pinot Noir for breakfast mm -hmm. for sure. Yes. So uh, here at Sac Roche we have um, just started bud break so when i walk around the vineyard it's really cool because you see these little bitty nubs that are sort of fuzzy and that those are going to be uh, eventually those are going to be the clusters that grow into grapes it's it's really gives you a chance to see the cycle of life you know when you come through the vineyard yeah so speaking of uh sacroche i think we should try a wine what do you think mike i think so there's one that has your name on it and voila, I just happen to have it here. So this is our Catherine Hall 2016. Mike, you have it too. And all of those you, if those of you who are there, I hope if you have a bottle in front of you, which I certainly hope you do, that you're gonna pour yourself a glass. So this, this vineyard was the first vineyard that we bought uh, and it, is where our home is here in uh, Napa Valley. And it just really is such a special vineyard. It has produced some of the really greatest wines of Napa over many years from long before it came under our control. And, uh, and this is what many of you may know this, but may some of you not, I think, is that Mike was not, not only is the president of the winery, uh, but he also was our first winemaker. And for many years, Mike, you made the wine that came off of this vineyard. I did. It was fun. It's, it's really an interesting place. It's got really um, dry, rocky soils. Uh, it makes a very unique, distinctive wine. Um, and certain parts of the vineyard are, are really as good as it gets anywhere in the Napa Valley. 
Maybe the world. Yeah. Oh, and certainly it ranks with the highest, you know, the best in the world. You know, I think um, it was really fun. Do you remember, Mike? This is now, gosh, uh, over, it was 15 years ago or so. We, um, we spent a lot of time, we reformatted the vineyard, we changed the spacing, we changed some of the clones, we changed rootstock on the vineyard and just went to a whole lot of expense on the vineyard to try to make it all that we thought it could be. And then when we got done, uh, the guy who had been working on farming this for 20 years actually before we got here said, uh, oh, I knew all that. I didn't need to, you know, you didn't need to have all this special <laughs> technology. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was actually in 2002, I think, when that vineyard w that's right behind you was replanted. And, um, and it's a very complicated vineyard, but I think the results are in the wines. And so we're glad that that complexity was planted that way. So Yeah, you know, so we're, we're 750 feet elevation here, which gives us um, sort of a we think there's really special qualities that come from grapes that are grown on a hillside, longer hang time, just a little more depth. And Mike, you can say it much better than I can, but I can just say, and the wine tastes awfully nice, I'm thinking. Yeah, so I hope everybody has a glass. Catherine and I are drinking the 2016 Catherine Hall Cabernet. And uh, Catherine Hall, as you probably know, is uh, our flagship wine. It primarily comes from the Sacrache Vineyard. It was the first wine we made. And I'm getting somebody in my ear saying, if anyone has questions, please go ahead and ask. Um, so, you know, we will, we will respond to questions that come through Facebook. Um, but, um, you know, I think the thing that's beautiful about the Catherine Hall is it's really rich and soft and elegant. And, as we're making the blend, we're really hoping to see a wine that has almost a plush, velvety texture if we do it well. And 2016 was a softer vintage in the Napa Valley. And for me, at least, I'm really seeing that elegance early on in the life of this wine. We always get, uh, though, we, the, the wines that we make off of this vineyard and when we put them together in the Catherine Hall, always turn out to be really, really elegant. I mean, that's just, they're luscious, they're rich, they're so easily, easy to drink. In fact, almost too easy because I think a lot of people will drink them younger than they probably should be drunk because just they are so tasty and has this sort of illusion of sweetness from the yeah, beautiful no, grapes. No question. One of the things that I, I think the wines that are in their wheelhouse right now are 2006, 2007, 2008. They're really hitting their drinking peak right now. So, you know, the wines are made to be consumed earlier, but they can also age for a long period of time. So I want you all to be asking some questions, but one of the things I'd like us to do, just to keep it the, want you to be thinking about as we're going on, and I don't want to stop us talking about the Catherine Hall mic. Uh, so we have two wines. We're going to do one more wine with you all. And, uh, and Mike and I are very prepared to do this. We're looking forward to either one you pick, we're gonna love. But anyway, this is the Jack's Masterpiece 2013. And the other one is the 2010 Excellence, which actually comes off of a, some specific blocks, off of some uh, certain blocks that comes right here off of this uh, vineyard. So we're gonna open one more bottle. We couldn't decide which one we would do. So we thought we'll just let you all vote. So give us, give us a shout out, tell us which one you want to try. And while you're doing that, Mike, let's talk a little bit more about this wine. So. Sure, so we have a question that came through. It's how does the 2014 compare to the 2016? And I think, you know, over the last couple of vintages, um, 13, 15 and 17 were really big, powerful, dense vintages. And, 2014 and 2016 were a little bit softer, a little bit more approachable early on in their life. Um, you know, there's no question that 13 and 15 will be the wines that age for decades, but, but if you're looking for a wine to drink a little bit sooner, uh, 14 and 16 are the right choices. They both have really sweet texture and great flavor, and um, mine is delicious right now. So I, it's a real problem that we have to open this at 4 o'clock. 
Yeah, actually, so is mine. Actually, so for years we we had we had to deal with drought up here for years, and uh, 2015 wasn't the 2015 was the end of our drought. 2016 was it? Uh, 2015 was the last vintage of, of the, drought. the drought. Yeah. So this is actually the first vintage where we had sort of a normal, whatever is normal in Napa Valley now, but. Yeah. yeah. So we have another question and that is what's a bespoke tasting? So whoever sent that in, you've been looking at our, uh, getting our social and probably looking at our website and thank you so much for that. So bespoke tastings are these tastings that we are doing uh, at the winery now, since we can't welcome you to the winery in person, we're gonna do these one-on-one, uh, -on -one, but just as Mike and I are doing now. So uh, you can sign up for a tasting. We'll actually craft the tasting around you or we'll suggest one for you. And then you'll meet with one of our senior wine educators over Facebook Live or over some uh, medium that you want to use, Google Hangouts or whatever you want to use. And uh, we'll walk you through a series of wines. So it's a tasting. Um, it's the closest thing we can do to having you in our tasting room. We'll welcome you there and we'll do that at the time. So, okay, I have another one question that came in and it says, should I drink the truth? Ah, Jack, this is, this is for you, Mike, for sure. He, Jack, Grace, or somebody wants to know, sorry to say your name, I hope it's okay. Uh, wants to know, should I drink the 2011 Jacks now? Yeah, so um, for those of you who don't know, uh, 2011 was a, a less ripe vintage than most of the ones we see in Napa Valley um, and very accessible. And I really think the 2011 vintage is really in its prime right now. It was maybe a little less concentrated than most other vintages at the time we put it in the bottle, but it's really opening up and it's smooth and elegant and rich and has beautiful development aromatically. We actually are selling that in the tasting room right now. And so I've had the chance to have it recently and I guarantee you will not be, um, you will not be disappointed if you drink that bottle of wine right now. So Mike, we have another question and it also relates to Jack, but um, before I pass it on to you, let me say this. Um, don't forget to vote. One of the, one of the uh, wines that we uh, offered here was the very wine that Mike is gonna ask, answer this question on right now, and that is the 2013 Jacks. And the question is this, Mike, how long should the 2013 Jacks age? Well, um, as uh, someone that we know well used to say, you should buy, you know, four cases of every wine and check one every month. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I think 2013 was one of the biggest vintages we've ever seen at the winery. Super concentrated, super powerful. It is uh, really opened up in the last year or two and is much, very approachable, but I think that wine is going to be spectacular in another 10 or 15 years. So if you like older wines, you know, that is a candidate for extended aging. It's, it's great now. And we may find out in a second, if you happen to have a bottle, Yep, Catherine and I do. So we'll see. Um, yeah. So here you guys, one, Oh, is that oh, wrong one? I need my excellence. Don't forget. These are the two we're voting on. So let us know. You know, if not, Mike and I'll figure it out, but That's let right. us know which one you want. Um, by the way, on the 2013, I think the 2013 Catherine Hall is just killer right now. I'm, I'm drinking that a lot. Yeah. Well, it's a good, that's a first world problem to have, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's actually funny. I was, I was reading the news the other day and there was a, there was a article in the San Francisco Bay Area that indicated and. I don't know where they got their data, but it indicated that um, alcohol consumption had gone up 42% in the Bay Area over the last week. So apparently <laughs> people are um, hopefully opening great bottles of wine um, while they're sheltering in place. You know what? That's also, um, I don't know if you've seen the news from China, which is ahead of us on this curve, how the divorce rate has been going up so much in China. 
with all this sheltering in place that they've been doing that now offices are like limiting how many people can apply for divorce each day. So maybe uh, increase in drinking and maybe <laughs> right. increase in. Yeah, in there's, a lot, there's a lot of togetherness time for all of us these days. Yeah. So someone asked, uh, what is the art piece behind Mike? And uh, that is this, we call this the garden plot. It's, uh, it's done by Nick Cave. Um, and it's this, uh, it's really this wonderful piece of tapestry that's made out of a variety of different fabrics. Uh, Nick Cave came from the new, the Rhode Island School of Design. He did some work back there many, many years ago. And so has worked always a lot with, uh, with textiles. And so this is a great example of that type of work of his. So, uh, let me see, what else do we want to say? Um, I don't, I'll just talk about the tasting room for a second. So, okay. um, you know, I think one of the things that we all miss is the energy down here, you know, with the people and the hustle and bustle. And I spent most of the day in the tasting room, but um, it doesn't quite feel like the tasting room. It's a little bit sad without people here having fun and, uh, and enjoying the wines and we get to enjoy hanging out with everybody. And we really look forward to when this passes, which it will, and we get to see everybody back here um, and enjoy a beautiful afternoon drinking a beautiful bottle of wine, so. You know, I think that's so true. One of the things I think that is so great about our ability to connect over video like this, like in Zoom, is where you can uh, sort of share something that we all like to do anyway, but share it with people even virtually. I, I can say I've had uh, friends that we have been doing this in the evening just for fun. And it's just been, it's a wonderful way to sort of, you feel like you're connected and you're talking about wine. And I actually think when you're drinking at home, you don't have to worry about driving. There's a lot of good things about being able to drink at home. Yeah, and so I'll just, I'll make another uh, suggestion. Kathy talked about our bespoke tastings. If you wanna organize a group of friends and, and do a, a wine tasting with a wine educator, we would love to do that with you and, and hopefully people will take us up on that. That program, you can you know, sign up for it now by calling us or going online. And, um, and I think it kicks off next week, so. Okay, we have a winner. Okay. And it's the 2013 Jack. So I'm gonna pour myself a little. And um, Mike, let me pass you some. Okay. Oh, thank you, Kathy. <laughs> not bad. Of course, it's not that we practice that. Okay, 2013 Jacks. By the way, before we start, I want to say something to you all about the uh, label on Jacks that you may not know. Can I see this bottle? I'm, let me get this over here. Um, this is, we put art on a lot of our labels. And this label is actually art that was created by Mike's son named Jack when he was really just a baby. 18 months old. Yeah. And I mean, look how good this is. And if you really want to have something that's really uplifting and just such a joy, I encourage you to go back in our, I don't know how you get this online on our website at Hall Wines, but we did a video of Mike introducing the wines and Jack, little Jack was sitting there, standing there, and he was just, oh gosh, he was so cute. He's still really cute, but now he's a big guy. You know? Now he's 6'4", he's huge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. He's not so little anymore. So. Okay, so 2000, and 2013 is, uh, we, I'm glad we're doing the, the Catherine Hall and the Jack side by side, Mike. I think it's, this is a nice comparison. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, ho hopefully the people who are big Hall Wines fans know this, but um, you know, the, the wine styles are, are pretty different. With Catherine, we're looking for a softer, more elegant style. And with Jack's, we're looking for a real depth and concentration of Cabernet dark fruit. As I said earlier, 2013 is a really concentrated vintage. And, um, you know, 
the wine is just opening up now to be really soft and rich and delicious. It was always good, but it's really starting to soften and open up. And, you know, someone asked earlier how long this wine was going to age. And this is a wine that's easily a 20-year wine. It's going to be, you know, spectacular in the 30s, if you can think that far out. Um, if you can wait that long, hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully you have enough that you can wait that long. But um, but if you have a bottle now and maybe you're drinking a glass with us, we hope you are. Um, it's really big, wonderful, delicious. So, Mike, we've had a couple of requests here to open the second wine. There were only two votes different between the uh, Jack's 2013 and the Excellence. I mean, you know. I think okay, we should, so we'll like, go for three like, wines. Why not? This okay. is Hall style. The problem is I only have two glasses, Kathy, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can you, you just ch chug one? I can, yeah, there you go. <laughs> right, okay, here we go. All I right. am going, well, let's see. Gosh, I'm, I'm bummed that you can't. Well, Mike, you know this wine, you can talk about I it. I can talk about it yeah. for sure, so. And, and I can say that it is, uh, this is pure um, Sacroche Vineyard, it uh, comes from uh, right behind me, this vineyard, or some some of the blocks off of this vineyard, and I can also tell you about the name. So it's called Excellence, uh, which happens to mean uh, ambassador in German, and I was the ambassador in Austria many years ago. So we, uh, this is uh, sort of uh, off of our vineyard, but it is still very personal to us. So, well, Mike, I'm going to enjoy it. You're just going to have to rely on your memory. But tell us about the excellence. Well, this is a very memorable wine, you know, um, for, a, for a number of reasons. But um, in 2010, uh, 2010 was the second uh, really wet vintage in Napa Valley. And uh, we went to a lot of effort to really pick the very best fruit from the Sacroche Vineyard for this particular wine. But... We also, <clears throat> in this vintage, um, it was our first 100-point wine. And uh, we um, had hoped, you know, that someone would recognize one of our wines with 100 points. And I remember the day that it came, I got an email, someone sent it along, and, you know, there literally was a yell down the hall because we were so excited. And I called Kathy on the phone and told her, and... You definitely screamed in the car, so that was good. It was a good day. It was um, a really good day. But, you know, this is a big, rich, dense wine. Um, it has benefited from the aging and, you know, not dissimilar from the Jacks. It's starting to really open up and soften with some wonderful, rich texture and bottle development, uh, sort of a almost a sweet caramel character aromatically uh, has been coming out in the wine the last time I had it. And just richness and layers of flavor and spectacular. Um, I, I remember we had an almost limitless supply of this on my um, 50th birthday. <laughs> I remember that. Which was a good party. That was a really good party. Yeah. So, and uh, this, uh, we have a question whether the excellence is available to drink at the winery and I, Right now, we can't pour you anything at the winery, although we can certainly ship wine to you. Uh, but we can include this as part of a bespoke tasting for sure. And it's pretty fabulous. Yeah, if you, if you go to our Rutherford winery in particular, we pour the excellence when people uh, come and taste at the Rutherford winery. And then occasionally we pour it in St. Helena. Um, but we do try to show different wines at different places uh, so that you have a different experience. Um, and so it really depends on which winery you go to. But as Kathy said, if you want to sign up for a bespoke tasting, we can help you out with that. For sure. For sure. I think it's right to be serving this at Rutherford since the Rutherford winery is right here on Sacroche Vineyard. Makes a, makes a lot of sense. Someone has also asked us about another wine, Mike, that you and I both love. Um, and that is the Kerr wine. So you want to say a few words about the Kerr? Yeah, so um, the Kerr wine, uh, first of all, it Kerr in French means heart. And um, 
the reason why we named it that is the St. Helena town and the, the St. Helena Appalachian is known as the heart of Napa Valley. And so that wine is a, a wine that we blend each year from grapes that come from St. Helena. And we love the bright fruit and almost a jammy character that comes from grapes that come from this place. Um, so I think this is wine that's much more drinkable early on in its life. It tends to have really bright fruit. It's a little bit softer in character and flavor. Um, and, um, you know, just it's, it's a crowd pleaser, if you will, because it's just so easy to drink. People just love it, right? Yeah. It's the curve. So what about the, this is another question we got, Mike, uh, the 20, 2016 North End. Yeah, so North End. If you don't know, um, the North End primarily comes from grapes at the North End of the Valley. And uh, it's not necessarily from any single Appalachian, but north of St. Helena. And we think that uh, grapes from that place tend to have some similarities. And um, since there wasn't an Appalachian that fit us, we made our own up, which was the North End. And so uh, you think about the north end of the valley, the wines tend to be a little bit um, more fruit forward, a little bit lower in acidity, um, and very drinkable early on in their lives. Yeah. And so if you are, uh, what would you pair with this kind of wine, that, that particular wine? I mean, I'm thinking certainly you could pair something savory, but, uh, I'm thinking in terms of sauces, uh, maybe something that has a little more, um, sort of a, a little lighter, maybe a little more acidity in the, in the wine, in the sauce. Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking like a tomato based sauce, um, you know, a really nice pasta dish, uh, pasta parmigiana, something like that. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I would also say we don't want to tell anybody what to drink we want you to drink what you like right there's there's good pairings but really define it on your own that's the more important thing and have fun with it so true you know one of the things i've seen over the years when just working uh on the road with accounts around the country uh is that you can be together with five sommeliers and every single one will try a wine and they'll find different qualities into it. I mean, there's no right answer about even the taste or the smell of any wine, much less what, you, what you're gonna pair it with. Absolutely, yeah. We hope you're having fun. That's the most important thing, right? Yay. That's what wine should be about. That is. Oh my gosh, okay, we have one more question here. Uh, this is a great one for you, Mike. What are, talk about some of the challenges of making great wine. Well, I think you'd get a lot of different answers from a lot of different people, but um, I will tell you that the most important thing is to have access to great vineyards. And um, so much of wine around the world is about having grapes coming from the right places, the special places, and then having really competent people making the wines, growing the grapes. Um, you cannot shortcut that you 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 need to make sure that's the number one goal and 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 what we're up to and we have an amazing team our vineyards are led by don monk um you know winemaking led by megan gunderson and allison frichtel and you know it's about great vineyards and great people making the wine and um and if you have that um the wine won't make itself but it kind of will and so we're really fortunate in that way yeah, my dad used to say that uh, a wine is basically made in the vineyard and there's just a little polishing around the edges that go along with it. But I, I think that the, um, there is just no substitute for vineyards, as you say, but at the same time, there's this precision and discipline that comes into winemaking. Uh, and it, it's true in the vineyard and it's true in the cellar. I mean, I really think that our, our team is very precise and very on point and um, and it's a lot of extra work but they but the results show you know we're getting close to the end which I actually hate yeah uh, but I want to tell everybody about the um, our upcoming 
uh, tastings that we're going to have. So as I said at the beginning, this is our first of the Hall SIP series, Shelter in Place series. Um, so our next one is going to be next Wednesday, April 8, and it's we're going to be tasting wine with the director of winemaking, Megan Gunderson, and at that point we're going to do our 2016-1873 and the 2017 Howl Mountain, which is really fun. It, those, you know, 2017 was the year that we had the fire, so that's going to be an interesting discussion for several reasons, one of which is just that particular vintage, which as you uh, can imagine was um, a test. Uh, then on April 15th, which is Wednesday, we've got the Art of Winemaking again with Megan Gunderson. And then we're gonna try the 2016 North End, which Mike has talked about. It'll be really fun. I hope you guys all come back uh, for that too. And we'll see what Megan says compared to what Mike said. 2016 North End and the 2017 Diamond Mountain. Again, another 2017, which will be totally fun. And then I, the last of this particular series is gonna be on uh, Friday the 17th of April. And it is the art of terroir and viticulture back with Big Boss Mike. So it's gonna be, uh, and then we're gonna do the 2014 Kerr and we're gonna do the 2017 Jack's Masterpiece. So uh, we've got those really fun things coming up. Also, just as a general rule, four o'clock Pacific time uh, for the next two and a half weeks, come back and see it. So we're, we're having these tastings at Hall, but we're also doing tastings with our Walt brand. That's our Pinot Noir brand, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. And then we have our Baca brand as well. Uh, that's our Zinfandel brand. And we're going to be doing a variety of tastings over the next two and a half weeks, every day at four o'clock. If you join us on Facebook Live at Hall or at Baca or at Walt Facebook Live, um, and we can do these tastings together. So uh, Mike and I'll be back for uh, several of them. I'll be back for actually all of the Hall ones and some of the other ones as well. So it's really been so great to have you here. And Mike, it's good to see you. Yeah, let's have a toast here. <laughs> there you go. So, here we go. Cheers, everybody, and cheers now, to you, Mike. Be well, be safe, and we hope that you uh, enjoy some great wine while you're sheltering in place. Here, here. Bye-bye, everybody.